Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter, DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is just a classic piña colada. You're going to need one and a half cups of ice, three tablespoons of pineapple juice, one cup of white rum, one tablespoon of coconut cream, and some pineapple wedges and some cherries for garnish. So you're going to mix all of the ingredients with some crushed ice in a blender is easy and then pour into a chilled glass garnish with your pineapple wedge and your cherry and enjoy a pina colada i didn't know that pina coladas were really popular in fiji i was looking up like fiji cocktails and so i'm mm-hmm. going to fiji in july mm-hmm. and i was like mm, a pina colada i thought it was spanish <laughs> <laughs> i think it's probably the rum and just the tropical looking drinks you know yeah. people love those welcome back to cocktails dirty discussions you guys hey y'all so what have you been up to? How was your weekend? My weekend was, it was good. It was good. I went to the, we, I don't know if it's we, them ones or we, them ones comedy tour. Uh-huh. Um, so it's not an 85 South show. Uh-huh. It's 85 South is in the lineup, but they all perform separately. Uh huh. And Little Duval performed two other comedians that I wasn't familiar with. And it was hosted by Mike Epps. Uh-huh. Um, it was at the State Farm Arena. It was pretty cool. You know, I love a comedy show. I yeah. love laughing or not because everybody's, everybody's not always funny. Not always <laughs> funny, but I love that you got the courage to go up there and try. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very hood, but it was fun. It was it was a good time. I did something else this weekend, and I'm trying to. Remember? Remember what it was. Don't you hate when that happens? Yeah. Or you think about it. I always think about it at the most random points. It's like we're about to move on. I'm like, well, I just need to get it out because oh, I forget. I, I, um, you told me about Yepa. And yes. so I met up with one of my girlfriends and um, we went to Yepa. And mm-hmm. I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to get in because we didn't have a um, reservation. reservation. And mm-hmm. it was a lot of people standing outside. But since it was only two of us, they were able to seat us really quick. I absolutely loved Yepa. Yeah. It's such a cute little place. It's not like... I think it's fine for like a date, but it's lively enough that it's not like, you know, you got to be quiet. Right. And it was, I really love the lighting. I love the mm-hmm. aesthetics, but the food, y'all, it was hitting. If you're looking for new places to go, I, this is not an ad, first of all. Uh, we just ended up going there and it was really tasty. But after I found Yepa, after mm-hmm. Kiki told me about Yepa, then I started looking up other restaurants on Instagram. And before we went to the comedy show, we went to a place called uh, Carmel. Have you mm. been to Carmel? I haven't been. It's on my list, though. So what did cute. You think? It's very small. No, it's very small. But um, mm-hmm. I thought it was really cute. It felt like we were in Morocco. Okay. I love the way it looked. Like that uh-huh. whole sponge paint that everybody's doing now. Uh-huh. Um, that's how the outside is. Everything is brown. You know, I mm-hmm. love a good brown everything. Um, the food was good. The drinks were good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe not. The espresso martini wasn't good, but... Who has an espresso there. martini that you like? Because the Intermezzo. people in Atlanta are not giving it to you like you Cafe Intermezzo has a really good espresso martini. Um, Yepa had a really good one. Uh-huh. Um, I have to make a little list of my favorite espresso martinis, but I've had some really good ones. I sometimes like it when they're kind of slushy, but not all the way slushy, but just really icy. I don't think I've had one like that. Really? That sounds good. It's good yeah. and it starts to melt and it makes the drink last a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. So I love it. Um, I'm going to be hosting a cocktail making class in May. I don't have the details yet or the location, but I just wanted to make sure I mention it since we record in advance. Um, mm-hmm. So make sure if you guys aren't following me on Instagram at Coffee Bean Dean, you follow me because I'll put all the details there. I'm really excited. Maybe we'll make an, an espresso martino. A martino. <laughs> martino. Martini. That's a I'm new sorry. one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm in real estate school. Okay. I'm getting my real estate license. I totally forgot. I started on... Um, Last week and Mm -hmm. um, how's it going? It's going. It's really difficult, but Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad I'm not doing online. I'm doing the in person, Mm -hmm. and um, there's like a little celebrity in my class. I thought I was gonna be the celebrity in my class. Don't (laughs) even know who I am. I went in there. I was like, I hope nobody knows me from the podcast. Nobody does. Oh my god! (laughs) And there's a whole other girl there. There's a whole little celebrity. I won't put her name out there. Uh But um, it's really cool to really be learning about real estate Mm -hmm. and everything that goes with it, which is a lot 
of information, bitch. Yeah. I'm like, bro. Like, and it's just also just really inspiring. I'm around, I'm surrounded around um, by a lot of real estate agents. A lot mm -hmm. of my girlfriends are real estate agents and bitch, they making money. Yeah. And not that I'm just going into it for the money, but that's a big part of it. Uh, but just the knowledge, it's like the people you meet and the stuff that you learn. And it, I've been wanting to work on like broadening my conversation mm -hmm. and just like putting myself in a, a education environment is really helping me do that and mm -hmm. just put me into a whole different group of people. Mm -hmm. Still been volunteering at the women's shelter. That's mm -hmm. very humbling. And uh, yeah, I've been trying new skin routines, brushing my teeth. Trying That's to- very um, important. Using my tushy. <laughs> I really love my tushy. This is not an ad either, y'all. The tushy is incredible. My boyfriend said he wasn't going to use it. He was like, I'm not uh -huh. going to use it. I'm not going to be using this. <sighs> yes, he be using it. He the main one using it. I was like, you, you don't even need to use it. Did you dookie? <laughs> what it you? feels good you can use it for other things too and it's funny because i was excited that they came on as a sponsor because i had already bought a tushy a few years ago mm -hmm. i heard them advertising on another podcast some time ago but i bought one because they have different ones now i didn't read the instructions on the one that i initially bought and it um it has two things and it does hot and cold water. So it's like the tushy really? spa. I don't know if they still make that or not. Okay, mine's but only that cold. One, yeah, so the ones that we got from Tushy this time. Oh, we got the basic one. Yeah, it's like the, yeah. Okay. But if you live, um, depending on how your bathroom is set up, because you got to like run water, mm -hmm. run the things through pipes by your sink. But it was really easy to set up. Yeah, the one that we got is easy to set up. Now, the other one, you got to like, you need a plumber. Uh, really? I, I, th I think so. A plumber or just a man? No, I think you need a plumber because you need to hook it up to where the sink is and you need to get the hot water and the cold water right. It's more oh. involved than just um, the easy installation. Like, I didn't do my own, but I think I could have done it if I needed to, but a man put it together for me. But yeah, Tushy has some great products and I just hope that you guys have ordered. If you haven't, do. It just feels good. It feels good. Get that booty clean. Get that booty clean. You can adjust the pressure. You can adjust adjust like the angle that is spraying you at. It was funny because when um got it installed, the guy had turned it on to like And he check didn't it. close it. Mm -mm. And it sprayed across. Luckily it was just a closed cabinet across from where my toilet is. But he came out, he's like, I need some more towels. And I was like, what happened? Like I was thinking a <laughs> pipe had burst or something. He was like, I, I sprayed it. Black and people do like, not read oh. instructions. Yeah, you gotta them. close the thing. But I was, it was, I was tempted to keep it open because I was like, "Is it gonna?" I didn't understand. Because you want to see it. Yeah, I was like, "How is it? It's pointing down." But anyway, I've been using my tushy, and I absolutely, uh, I absolutely love it. I want to remind everybody: we're going to Fiji in July. Go to paradiseandvibe.com to book, but also. Um, you can book for Iceland now also. Uh, we're going to Iceland in November. I don't know the dates off the back of my head, but Iceland's going to be amazing. Go to paradiseandvibe.com. Come with me to Fiji and Iceland and or Iceland. What you been up to, Kiki? Well, I just got back from Dallas today. Mm, today? Um, today. What time? Um, it was probably like 11. You look fresh. You don't, On the day of my travel days, I look bad. Uh, well, I just put my makeup on before I came here, but it, it's been a long day. I've been up since the crack of dawn, but I had a really good time in Dallas. Um, I went out there uh, partially because it was my niece's birthday. She's a St. Patrick's Day baby. Mm. And so me and Whitley went and she had a skating party. Whitley came to the party too. Was it at the stadium? No. Okay. They don't live in Arlington. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so we went to a skating rink. She had her party. And then afterwards we went to this restaurant I found on Yelp. It's called um, Cajun Jack's. And it's in Roanoke, so it's way out in the burbs, but they had some really good crawfish and some really good food. And it was just nice to sit down and talk with them. The little girls are growing up. Mm. And so she's getting older, my youngest niece, she's getting older and just like, as they get older and have more experiences and just their conversation skills growing and just watching them grow up, I'm really grateful that I get to go home and see them and spend time with them because I am so far away and they don't come out here very often. It's just like, I was a afraid that I would miss a lot of the moments. So mm -hmm. I've really been for a long time uh, putting in a lot of effort to make sure that I get to see them and be around them um, and all that. So that was that. good. Um, I also, <clears throat> my sister Madison, she just moved into a new place with her boyfriend. So she invited me over, I hung out with them and um, I hadn't had any like one-on-one, -on -one. it still was a one-on-one, -on -one. it was two me and my sister and her boyfriend, but I hadn't had a lot of like conversations with him because usually when he's around, it's like a big gathering. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it was nice to be able to talk to him without so many people. 
Um, I enjoyed that. And then what else did I do? So she gave her dog. She got a dog around the same time I did. Mm -hmm. Her boyfriend got it for her. Um, and she said, you know, I think I'm just really not a person that needs to have a pet. It's just a lot more mm -hmm. responsibility. This is my second go around. She gave the dog to Joseph. <laughs> So, really? yes, Joseph, my baby brother, he has taken the dog in and he has renamed him. Oh. And the dog. What's his name? His name is Twizzy. Oh. It was Mochi, but now it's Twizzy. And um, Twizzy got attacked by a dog the other day. Isn't Twizzy a puppy? Yeah. What kind of dog was he? Um, I don't know. So, Giselle, Gianna, and Phoenix were walking the dog around the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. And this, she, I'll have to show you the drawing, but she did a sketch. Giselle loves to draw. She's really good at it. It mm -hmm. was an excellent sketch. But this man had his dog. The dog unleashed himself oh my and God. like ran up to them. Fear. Yeah. So Giselle is the oldest. So she's trying to like get Twizzy. He's freaking out. The dog gets Twizzy. Like bites him. Yes, he has stitches now. They had to shave off his little fur and give him stitches. He definitely has PTSD. The little poor puppy was just so shaky and so nervous and Whitley's all excited to meet her little cousin. And he's like, back up, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... And then the younger two, like Gianna grabs Phoenix and they go hide behind some bushes and the man runs over like, oh, I'm so sorry. And it's just like, you are so lucky that Joseph or like an older person wasn't there and because no. And so we had her draw a sketch because who is this person? I was going to say, are you going to press charges? I don't know what they're going to do, um, but we don't know who the person is. And mm -hmm. me and Whitley and Giselle were looking for him. We was driving around. I said, well, let's see. I saw a dog. I took a video. I was like, Giselle, is this a dog? I sent it to her. She's like, no, that's not it. But anyway. When people are traumatic. irresponsible pet owners. And because I, even, like I understand the accidents happen. Okay, the dog got off the leash. But you should come and check on the dog and just be like, hey, my dog attacked your dog. If anything, if you guys have to pay for some some hospital bills, vet bills, and let me, like, be responsible if you're a pet owner. And I also feel like because this was an adult and you saw three little girls with a dog, you should have asked them where the adult was, where, where's your home? I need to speak to your parents. Mm -hmm. And he didn't do that. So anyway, that was a mess. Um, what else happened? I also got a chance to catch up with some of my girlfriends. We went and tried this restaurant. I never go out to Farmer's Branch, but there's a restaurant in Farmer's Branch. Farmer's Branch is um, outside of Dallas. Oh, I forgot you went. To, you're in Dallas. This is mm -hmm. so. There's this restaurant. It's called Roots. Um, I think it's called Roots Southern Table. It was so good. Mm. We tried so many different things. I love when it's a nice size group, like at least three or four people, so we can all try a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, it was just delicious. So another restaurant I highly recommend. Um, Mm -hmm. It's small. They do take reservations. I highly recommend reservations because it was packed on a Tuesday at 730. Mm. And people were like sitting there eating and they just didn't want to get up. And we're like, we got a reservation. Y'all need to come on. But yeah, so that was fun. Um, hanging out with some friends. I have some friends in town right now. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to catch them before they go. And just trying to get out of the house more. Um, we'll see because it's spring and I love spring, but sometimes I have to look at spring through the window because my allergies have been kicking my ass. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just yellow and green everywhere. And I was sneezing. I don't know if y'all heard me. I was in the bathroom sneezing and just, ugh. but you know, I'm was it warm it. in Dallas? Mm, not really. It's kind of like this. Okay. It was a little bit cooler. Actually at night it was cool in the middle of the day. It would warm up. Oh, I tried this other good barbecue place too. I love barbecue. It's called Heim. It was in. Uh, Fort Worth. That was really good. I had some good food this weekend. Mm, That's I for love sure. Some good food. Mm -hmm. And they had a nice little happy hour in the middle of the day. So yeah, it's been good. And um, I am excited because I have some trips coming up. Um, I am going on a birthday trip with some girlfriends Ooh. later in April. Where y'all going? And we're going to Turks and Caicos. Oh, yeah. So I'm really excited, and I think it's going to be a fun time. It's a fun group of girls. I can't wait to go. That's I'm excited. Going to be fun. What are you looking forward to the most? Um, I think just the girl time because everybody has been so busy and everybody doesn't live here. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's eight of us, I think. Um, so just to be able to get together, celebrate our friend, and be in a tropical location. Feel the sun, get a tan with the girls. It's just going to be a good time. That's going to be so much fun. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to a wedding in May. It's not a tropical location. It's a tropical location. It's a 
Diamond Beach, New Jersey. I've never even heard of it, but it Me is either. very bougie and very mm -hmm. cute. And I cannot wait. It's gonna. It's not really gonna be a girls' trip, but I get to be reunited with some girlfriends because we're all we all got invited to the wedding. Uh huh. And um, some of us are That's bringing fun. our boyfriends, and we all got an Airbnb, and we're all gonna stay together. So uh -huh. I'm excited. It's gonna feel like Temptation Island all over again. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, anything else you want to update them on? Um, I don't think so. Not this week. Maybe in a couple weeks. Um, so I guess we can go ahead and move on to weird sex. Don't let spring cleaning fool you because you know there's always some room for a little something extra in the bedroom. You know, it's no secret that THC can really set the mood in the bedroom, right? And so that's why we're thankful for today's sponsor, Via. Via Hemp has a unique blend of aphrodisiac herbs and a mild amount of THC for their perfectly sexy, set in the mood, I'm about to get it on tonight for the bedroom, gummy, high love. It's so good, it doesn't have any sort of weird taste or anything, it's just everything is great. It's going to awaken your senses, it's going to have you feeling sexy and confident and relaxed all at the same time. It's just amazing. And you know, the crazy thing about THC is that sometimes it's hard to find the right strain or the right dosage for how you wanna feel, what you wanna experience. And Viahemp takes the guesswork out of everything. And they also have so many other gummies that you can try if you just check them out on their website. I love the high love, mm -hmm. but I've been dipping and dabbling and trying out a few different flavors because they have such amazing tasting gummies. They do. So y'all know we talk about high love all the time. Every week we love it. We're taking it on dates. We're taking it during arguments to love people more and act <laughs> right. But I love their flow state. Flow state is a good one to pop when you need to focus. There's no THC I love the flow in, in the flow state gummy. And I love that. Like I was sitting in front of a computer for about... I want to say four hours a few days ago. And I was like, you know what? Let me try. This is my first time trying the flow state. Mm -hmm. Took a whole one and I was focused. I was locked and loaded and got everything I needed to get done within the time frame that I needed to get it done. And I didn't feel like there was Stress. no THC in it. So it wasn't like it was, it had me giggly or off. T I was focused, man. I love, I love Via Hemp. Absolutely adore the company and the brand and the gummies and the flavors. Yeah, Viahemp is amazing, and we want you guys to let the gummies work their magic on you. If you are 21 or over, check out the link to Viahemp in our description and use the code COCKTAILS to get 15% off, plus you'll get a free sample too, which who doesn't love free samples, right? right? Um, take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with High Love from Viahemp. You said a man is not a necessity, a man is a luxury, like dessert. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's absolutely not necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Okay. So, you guys, this week's weird sex story, a listener sent this in, and I think I initially did the story, but this is kind of an update, but it was so long ago, I'm just going to um, tell y'all again. So, there was this guy in Florida, of course. His name is Richard Patterson. I really feel like throughout this case, he just wanted everybody to know he had a big, thick dick. Mm -hmm. So... He just got acquitted of second degree murder because he was having sex with his girlfriend. Um, and basically she died while they were having sex because she choked on his <clears throat> dick. I would be so mad if that Could you imagine? It. And she has kids and stuff. And now it's like everybody knows that you were choking on a dick and that's how you passed away. RIP to that lady. But the man, um, they were saying that the coroner, somebody was saying that, you know, for her to choke and like suffocate, it had to be in there blocking her airways for like two to three minutes. And I'm just wondering, were they into something super kinky? Like, why is it down there and just stuck for so long? Two to three minutes is a long time to just have it lodged in someone's throat. Or that was he lot. pushing her head and she was trying to get up? Or was he pushing her head and she was? he was like, are you good? Are you good? She was like, and she was acting like she was good. You know how you try to take more than you can? I don't do that no more. But yeah. Um, I don't know. And she can't tell us. But they kept trying to like show how big his penis was to the jury so that they could get it. And that's why I was like, you just want everybody to know you got a big, thick dick. And then they were like, well, we can't just like have him show them. It needs to be erect. And I'm like, this is getting out of hand. Only in Florida. What was his race? Um, Caucasian. 
Oh, well, at least he, uh -huh. somebody's representing for y'all because that's not normally the case. And he was 65 cutting up like that. But yeah, she she choked. And I think that's very sad. He did not get any murder charges for it because that's what he was up against. But I do find it very odd that um, she had been dead for like 48 hours before the police saw her decomposing body. And he called the attorney before calling the police. Isn't that fishy? It's fishy, but then it's also like, this he person. probably was so scared. Not that that's not, you shouldn't do that, but he probably was like, fuck, am I gonna, I didn't kill her. Her son was saying that he feels like he was definitely trying to avoid any sort of um, punishment for what happened. But I mean, I guess it all worked out for him. Um, but yeah, don't do that, y'all. You need to call the police. And don't be choking on dicks. It's not fun. You don't want to end up like this. Like, that's how you went out. Oh, so I'm sad. just imagining that funeral. That was probably so uncomfortable. Everybody was probably like, there's there probably a few people whispering like, did you hear what happened? You know what happened? You know why the class of his clothes that jaw was broken? And then he walks in there like, look at his dick. You can see the print through mm. the suit pants. Like, mm -hmm. Then it's just like all this whispering and stuff And then somebody's on. like, she did used to like it rough. And mm -hmm. I told her to stop. And it's like, bro, come on. Yeah. Man. Like, you know, we don't have to do that. We could just... Respect Move them. on. Anyway, RIP to um, the victim, Francisca two Martinez. Things, two things about that, because it, it sparked something in my mind. Okay, what? when we were, speaking of second dick, when we were had um, the Cheaties girls on, and mm -hmm. you were like, well, what were you doing in the movie theaters? Remember we were talking about second I what I did. I, I was, when I was cutting, doing the clips, re-watching the episode, I was like... Oh, yeah, because I'm like, you so definitely told a story long but ago. And, and I, I was do like, remember. Okay, well, I maybe she wants yeah, to forget. I said, I'll, I'll move on. Let me go ahead and clear that up. <laughs> let me go ahead. I forgot there was one instance when I was in the movie theater and I wrote a little email chain letter. Email mm -hmm. chain letters really used to be, ooh, <laughs> that was embarrassing. Um, but then another thing about that crazy, weird sex story, I started re watching the. Um, What's her name? Jody Arias case. Do you okay. are you familiar with Jody Arias? Mm -hmm. So um, if y'all aren't, she in two thousand eight, I think she killed her boy. He wasn't her boyfriend. She was. She had a case of something is wrong. He was playing with her. But that's a whole other story. But I started re-watching it. When, I, when that first happened, we were fresh mm -hmm. out of high school. And I don't know why I was always obsessed with the case. Because I was like, wow, she was so little. She was cute. And she was so soft-spoken. And she really stabbed up her man. Not her man. Kind of her man. Her, she was his secret and she mm -hmm. caught feelings and he was Mormon and he wasn't supposed to be fucking her. And he really didn't like her. It was a, just a bad case because she had just had enough. He kept playing with her feelings. She stabbed this man 27 times after he was dead. She slit his throat. He was dead. And then she shot him in the head. That bitch was not playing. <laughs> um, I don't know You're going to feel this in the afterlife, bitch. Girl. That's so how like, she felt. I re they have this like three-part series of the case. And I was like, I What's wanna, it on? It's on Hulu. Okay. I rewatched that, but then they added, people were really obsessed with this case. They said this was the most watched, like, killer case. I don't know the terms for it, uh, like, directly under O.J. Simpson. And really? I think it was because she was a woman. She was young. She was cute. And they made a Lifetime movie, but I rewatched the Lifetime movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> falling down the black hole again. Right? <laughs> you know when you fall, get in the black hole? Because I really was like, I really can't believe this lady did this. So then they did, they have another documentary where they have her cellmates that she was having a love triangle with. She was just manipulating everybody. And at first, Jackie, Jody was really saying that she didn't kill him. So then I was thinking about the guy. What if he really did smother his girlfriend on, her, on his dick? It, like, and she, nobody can tell the story. Right. Only him. So it's just like physical evidence versus his version of the story. And like, if he really did do it on purpose and she realized that and it was too late, I know she's just punching the air. Like, I want to tell somebody. She's probably trying to send a signal down to somebody or something yeah, we scared of ghosts that, that is just a wild way to go, oh to go out another thing i thought about just now i got really upset and i started to go on a twitter rant but then i said i'm also hangry i left and went to go get something to eat but um somehow on what app is that it's like peacock or paramount one of them yolanda Saudi bar. I saw you tweeting about it. And I was like, and what? I had to stop because I was getting so angry. Like I was, I was mad. So there's a the documentary's out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta watch it. And it's it. multiple parts, I guess. I didn't finish it, but I'm just like, y'all just won't let it go. It has been almost thirty. Years. What are they interviewing her about? If y'all don't know who Yolanda Saldivar is, she is the murderer of Selena. Mm -hmm. Because she 
So basically, she's trying to say that when she signed the confession, she just did it because they were pressuring her and that it was an accident. And I'm just like, you shot this woman. And you chased, didn't you chase her? Or was did um, Selena just run out after she got shot? She ran out after she got shot. I don't I don't know what else happened. Because then I'd be trying to remember, okay, you can't just think about the movie with J-Lo. That's you got to think about like the actual That's what I was thinking. Things. But also, okay, I'm still thinking about the movie with J-Lo, but Yolanda was stealing money. Yeah, so she said she wasn't stealing money in this documentary. And I'm like, okay, so if you wasn't stealing the money, there was no embezzling. And what were you going to meet up with them for with a gun? Why, Why did you have the gun? firing you? Come on. So she they kept showing these same pictures of them where they're like friends and stuff. Like, yeah, that happens, but it doesn't mean that you couldn't have been a snaky bitch all along. And then she started saying Selena was having an affair with this surgeon down in Mexico. And she went with Selena down there and she has all these secrets. And I'm like, oh, so why are you telling them now? Because you're trying to get out on parole because she's up for it next year. And you're trying to drum up some deals so that you can have some money. Got her family on there. I was just really upset. Now, obviously, I was not there. Mm -hmm. But, but I, love, I love me some Selena. I used to really, I used to want to be Mexican all because of <laughs> Selena. I was singing the songs in Spanish. I remember in second grade at BBC Elementary School, I sang, I performed <laughs> Bitty Bitty Bum Bum as my talent <laughs> for the talent show. And I really was, I don't know what she sang on Bitty Bitty Bum Bum, but I would make up my own words. Right. Semna sola. Mola flora, What's that other one she got? Um, with the Cumbia Kings. Um, is it the? I was like, oh my God. 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 Yeah, and that's what she was yeah. doing in the yeah. in the thing. And I was trying to bob out like the washing machine. And then I remember when I came to Texas, um, all my little Mexican friends were obsessed with Selena too. They had the CDs. Did you have the little bell bottom outfit and the no, little hat? I didn't either, but I, didn't I wanted have that. it. Yeah. My mom was like, You are not having your belly out. Put, exactly. Put some no. clothes. You, little Mexicans be dressing grown. Yeah, you I didn't, didn't get to have any of that, but it, I do love I Selena. I love she started getting into R and B. I I mean y'all she really just kind of snatched her life. What? That's and then to get up here 29 years later and say it was an accident, that's the part that was really pissing me off. Because how I've shot a gun before. Me too. Ain't no way. Not at a person in the range. You got to put so much pressure to do it. And she was like, well, I was just telling her I was going to kill myself. Why are you going to kill yourself if you didn't steal the money? I don't believe it. And it's upset me and other people on the internet. I always wonder if they would ever um, remake the movie Selena. But then I'm like, I don't even They did think a little series. Oh, I watched it. I sure do. And I liked it. But if they redid the movie, mm -hmm. I wonder if I finished the series because I can't remember. I did not. I was like, eh, yeah. Yeah, I don't good. think I did it. <laughs> J-Lo did such a good job at playing Selena that like you thought she was Selena. Yeah, you thought she really had acting skills too. Yeah. But. You don't think J-Lo can act? I, th I actually think she can act. She does okay. I think it seems kind of like she's probably just playing herself over and over again maybe. I don't know, but I'm just not a fan of a lot of the movies. But that one, she did her big she one She did her big She set it off. If you could play somebody in a movie, like if you could think of like a celebrity that they could make you look like and you could play her, like is there someone you would want to play? I have really never thought about that. I, I don't know. have. Okay. <laughs> Who? Brandy. Oh, okay. Just because I really feel like I would get the role because uh -huh. all my life I've been told I look like her. And I think with a little acting coaching mm -hmm. um, from my brother, Acts of Freedom Studios, what's up? <laughs> Shout out to him. I really think I could play Brandy one day. So if they ever make a movie about her, I really hope everybody's like, book Medina. But I don't know if they will because I really don't know what Brandy been through. And so I really want to have like a cry, a breakdown cry moment. Mm -hmm. Well, she did have that accident. She That's probably so a good time did. to have a breakdown cry. Yeah. And then she had that fake marriage. Fake marriage? Yeah, she was saying that she was married when she had her daughter, but really it was just like one of those not legal marriages. And I think she was doing it because, you know, their mom was like, 
you know, you really need to follow the rules and do the things the right way because she came up young and everything and she wasn't married and having a baby. Mamas need and daddies need to stop telling the kids that now. Yeah, it's like, like, I get it, but let's stop because now people is going to different doing lengths crazy to lie. Things. Now you look yeah. crazy. Now you're depressed because the internet found out that you was lying. I would be so embarrassed. Speaking of embarrassing, I still cannot remember who I was having this conversation with. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was you. I don't know if it was Tierra. I had this conversation with someone about uh, Portia Williams or Ugobadu Badia. And, Ugobadia. Ugobadia. <laughs> and everybody Go -go <laughs> had been talking about how like, oh, Portia, you know, this, this, something about the marriage being so great. And I was like, I don't really think she's happy. I don't really think this is going to last. Not that I was mm -hmm. trying to put negativity on her marriage, but I was just like, something about when you only post like the the riches of someone, I just don't believe it. I'm like, something is, we trying to hide something. You smiling with these teeth. Anyways, <laughs> um, they're getting a divorce. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, I saw that when the headline came out and she will be on the next season of Real Housewives of Atlanta because she wasn't on there last time. I mean, I also think there's something to say when you get with your man when he's still married to somebody else and you were just parlaying in her pool and stuff. And wasn't that her friend? Well, you know, reality TV. Oh, so you know they how they really... set up the story. Yeah, they. Oh, because that wasn't her actual real friend. Mm -hmm. See, that'd be getting me. <laughs> um, but it was so funny because I was talking about it last night to Bay, and he was like, "I don't care about this." And I was like, "But can you just listen?" Because I really, <laughs> I had said I called it. I was like, "I knew it was going to get a divorce." So then he was like, "Well, let me look it up." Because he was like, I, "I don't know what the husband looks like." He was like, "He's African and big bellied." I was like, "I don't think he has a big belly, uh -uh. but he is African." And so he had looked him up. He was like, "This is crazy." He was like, "He already has a new girlfriend." I don't know that that's his girlfriend because he'd be out with different girls every day. But it's the Body by J girl. That's the one Not that I saw. Not just him her. It's another girl. And they were just out with Nene and her boo. And then he had another girl somewhere else. That is absolutely. So I don't it know just that makes it's his me girlfriend. Wonder. He's just outside again. Do you think Portia married him so he could get his... Do you think he married her because he was going to get... I didn't know he's not a citizen. I didn't know he that. He can't get his citizenship. He has already tried to scam the American people. He came over here. He got a felony. For what? Scamming in the 90s. He was a so throwback why is it scammer. He, sent back? he got deported and came back under a different identity and decided to be famous. You know, I keep up with this kind of stuff. So, yeah, so he came back and then he's been trying to get his citizenship. And then I forget all of the details, but I know there was something about him applying and then not being honest in his applications and then applying under different names and doing all this stuff. And then he would leave the country mm -hmm. and come back and all this other stuff. You notice they be in Dubai and Costa Rica a lot. Hmm. What's that mean? I don't know what that means. You probably needed to leave America. Oh. I don't know, though. I mean, I wasn't there. I wasn't and then I was the trying text. to think, because they were only married a year and a day or something like that. And they had 50 11 weddings. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like a, a fun ride. And I'm but not for real life. Not it seems for like real something life. for like a movie or something. You know? I wonder, did she just do it for publicity for the show? And because it's not like she's about to she walk away with money because you weren't married that long to get any sort of spousal support. Um, I don't think it's that. I don't think it was for the show because she she got with him and quit the show. Mm. Now I do think that she had some plans. I feel like it's um a typical Atlanta love African story. love story where somebody is promising you things and then after a while you realize they can't do everything or they won't do everything that they said they would and something in the milk ain't clean. But I don't know. We'll see. I can't wait to see it unfold. That little baby is... I just feel bad for Portia because I feel like she's just searching for love. Mm, you think so? I think so. I think she wants like... She probably does want love, but it just seems very much... I'm searching for the man with the biggest bag. I don't know. I, don't, I feel like I would she's love sad. to talk to her about it. I would love to talk <laughs> to her about it. So girl, if you listen to the show or if y'all listen to the show and this makes a clip, make sure y'all tag her. Um, yeah, let's chat, Portia. What's going on? What did this man tell you and what did you find out? We need to know the tea. We do need to know the tea. And I also wonder, like, when people leave the housewives and then come back, like, how she's doing, I wonder, like, do you need that check? Or do you think she just knows this is good TV and so let me go back? They probably wanted her back. Because it's uh, boring now. Mm-hmm. And she was good on the show. And then, you know, it was like the story about his citizenship came out. And then shortly thereafter, the divorce came out. And so it's like, I'm sure a lot of this is going to unfold on TV. And it is an easy check. like. And I'm not going to lie. it may I don't watch Housewives anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes me 
all this happening, it's like, okay, now I got, now, now I, you want to watch? Could, it made me want to watch it. Now I'm going to be like, okay, every Sunday night, I'm about to be like y'all. And that's what Bravo and Andy Cohen and the rest of the people were hoping for when they gave her that money to come back and do the show. I wonder how much they gave her. I wonder too. You hmm. think it's in the millions? I could see her getting at least a million, million and a half or something. Mm -hmm. She also got a deal with um, NBC Universal to do to produce multiple shows that mm. are uh, scripted shows. Really? So she really worked out a really good deal with her coming back because Bravo is part of that company. Yeah, huh, I wonder how those shows will be. I don't know. But I think it's a cool opportunity that you'll get to you have this deal to create some content with whoever you, else you're going to be working with. That's um, pretty cool. Find us, Portia, because we could make cocktails of scripted series and um, you could be a producer on it. <laughs> Speaking of shows, I started rewatching Being Mary Jane and I mm -hmm. am just loving it. I loved that show and I can't believe that it ended so abruptly. I love Being Mary Jane. I can't Mary remember Jane. how it ended. I know she I moved to like New York either. or something and- she, I don't, I don't think she ever got the man. I like now that I'm watching it as a real adult, because when Me and Mary Jane came out, I want to say that was like, was it like 2015? Yeah, I think so. Somewhere around there. Yeah, I don't think my frontal lobe was fully developed. Mm -hmm. And so now watching it as an adult woman and having been through a lot of some of her same experiences, like me and Bay would just pause it and have commentary about like the different situations. Sometimes it starts an argument. I'd be like, oh, sometimes God. I wish I didn't tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth <laughs> about my life. Because nigga, <laughs> shut up. Babe. This is a show. We're just supposed to have a discussion, not <laughs> yeah. argue. It's not it's like we talk about sleeping with married men. Okay, <laughs> let's push play. Um, so this week, we're going to talk a little bit about timelines, and I'm glad you brought up being Mary Jane, because I had told you guys before, um, in the book club, we had read this book called Black Girls Must Die Exhausted, right? And um, it's a trilogy, and I'm currently reading the third one. Um, and so when we had our meeting about it, one of the girls said that the book reminds her of being Mary Jane. Really? And I agree to a certain extent. Like the woman is a news anchor and she she wants love. She wants children, but things are not going her way. And one of the things that we talked about that was a theme in the book. And then also it's just been a theme in a lot of conversations I've been having with different friends and family members and just seeing online and stuff is this whole idea of having a plan for your life. But then you have this timeline. Mm -hmm. And when you start approaching usually different ages, like 30. Um, 30 get, is the magic depressing number. Yeah. What is that? And it's like when you get there, you start, a lot of women start panicking if they don't have children, if they're not married or not in a relationship or they're in a relationship and it doesn't seem like it's going there. And people have these ideas that are attached to ages or certain times with how they want their life to go. And it's like some people will... When that happens, you adjust your timeline mm -hmm. and you just rework things, right? Reassess your goals and your life plan. And then some people start making really bad decisions. Like when we were talking about Risa Tisa last time <laughs> and she admitted that she wanted her love story. She wanted to be married. She wanted all of the things. Mm -hmm. And so she was just ignoring every red flag. I mean, the red flag popped her tire and it didn't stop nothing. So I wanted us to talk about our own timelines, if we've had them, and just like what we've gone through in life. So I guess we can start with like early 20s. Would you say you had like 21 to 24-ish, 25? Did you have a timeline for your life at all? Or even younger, maybe? Because I know when I was young, I think I had an unrealistic expectation of how life goes and like the experiences that you have and everything. And I definitely thought when I was like a teenager and early 20s that I would have a different life at 30 than I did when 30 actually came. I thought it would be more stable. Like sometimes I feel like I'm 35. I don't always feel super grown. And being younger, you yeah. And it's like being younger and thinking about like my mom when she was 35 is not, we do not live the same kind of life. And it's like when my mom was 35, she was married, she had children and all of these things. My mom already had three kids. <laughs> I'm always like, when I think, Think about that. I'm like, bro, if I had three children right now. Yeah, my mom had four. Four kids and a husband. And it's in a house and it's just in a career. And it's like, that's so grown. And here I am. Me, the <laughs> podcast. 
Live and a the dog. Life. <laughs> right. Like, okay, and I'm, please forgive me because I'm good. I'm my memory sometimes when I have to go all the way back to those years, mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna try to remember, but like timelines, yes. I think that's a normal thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have like maybe what was on your timeline, maybe? Like what were some of the things that you wanted to do that you had to readjust your timeline later? <laughs> So it's weird because some of the things I didn't want to do, but they were still in the picture, if that makes sense. So it's like, like I never wanted to go to school. But you did it. But it was in my timeline. It was still like, you graduate, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to own my own PR firm. I have this whole, like, I don't know if I had like an actual timeline or just this vision of Mm -hmm. like how it was going to go. So it was like, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to own my own PR firm. I'm going to... Um, finish school. I mean, have the finish school, have the PR firm, get married, have kids again, like you, like, and I'm going to have and travel, but travel was never like, I always traveled. I wasn't joking when we had Rod Minger on. I was like, I've been traveling since I was three. I've always traveled. And so that was always just in the mix of like, I'm going to see the world while I'm doing all this. I'm going to live in a humongous mansion and I'm going to have the husband of my dreams and I'm going to have beautiful children. Always wanted twin girls. The rest (laughs) that come don't matter. (laughs) <laughs> but I'm going to have these twin girls and um, I'm going to have this beautiful friend. Like it was the only thing I didn't really want to do on that list was like go to school, but still did it. Had an amazing time while I was there. I didn't have like a timeline though, because everything started getting fucked up very quickly. <laughs> so why did you have the school stuff on there if you didn't want to do it? Parents. Mm. Like parents are definitely, I'm not even going to just say society, pa- society, parents, like parents mm-hmm. are like, this is what you do. And yeah. it's not like I blame my parents. Situation. I get why parents are like, you have to go to college. But now me sitting back in the debt from the college <laughs> that I didn't want to go to and did not finish. It's like, bro, you don't, for, you shouldn't, you should give people, let everybody, let the young people know what their options are. Mm-hmm. So that's the only reason. That's why I went. It's not, it wasn't traumatizing though. It's not one of the things where it's like, my parents made me do it. I went, I had an amazing journey while I was there. But I think me not finishing school, it totally interrupted whatever timeline I had because everything just got shifted. Like Mm -hmm. it was like, whoa, okay, you really can have a plan. And that shit really might not happen. (laughs) So when you decided not to do school anymore, I was scared. What were you thinking you were going to do then? I don't, I didn't have a plan. Okay. You're just like, I know this isn't it. I was like, I know this isn't it, but I know that I don't even know if I was like, I know I'm going to be okay. I was like, I'm just going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what happened. And along the way, like the adventures and the depression and the brokenness (laughs) and the friendships that were made and the people that I met, like, I don't think um, that I would change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But timeline is really interesting because I can't even now, like, I don't. I can't see the timeline, like, of things. It's just, like, I can see what I want. Yeah, but, like, even, like, with goal setting, right? Like, we were talking about this when we had Kita on and, like, being in a relationship for X amount of time before, because you want it to progress to something else. Have you ever had, whether it was a relationship thing or maybe other goals where you put, like, a time frame on it? Mm. Definitely have, Mm -hmm. but not in, like, a... The thought of marriage is always there. Like, I'm trying to answer the question. I want to answer it, like, honestly. Even when we were talking about, like, the two-year thing. Like, if you with somebody longer than two years, do they really want to marry you? That goes into a whole other thing because it's like you – that doesn't just go stand for everybody. Like, if you're not getting to know somebody and you just with somebody, you're like, we together for two years, you better be – you know what I mean? But if you're not – Yeah, I think that for me it's like what I've learned is – you have to adjust and everything, you cannot over plan your life. Mm-hmm. And as somebody who has tried to do that many moons ago, and I've learned kind of to go with the flow more often, it's like you have to appreciate the journey. And so when I'm talking to like younger girls and stuff who have, they're starting to get scared because they're at a certain age and they haven't done things or they haven't figured out what they want to do with their career. And people are saying, well, you're 30. You should know this. Yeah. I hate when people say that. You know, people say that. that And some people haven't figured out, but everybody doesn't. And some people don't figure out till later. And I've just been trying to encourage more people who bring it up to me to like, 
not stress about it because that when you're stressed about the things that you don't have, that's when you start making bad decisions. And like having these timelines and these goals, it's like, I think everybody should set goals, but be okay when you want to pivot, be okay when you don't reach the milestone by the date that you had in your mind and just being okay with adjusting more. I think um, around like 25, I felt like I was going through a quarter life crisis. And I was like, what the fuck is a quarter life crisis? My aunt said, she asked me if she thought I was going through it. And I was reading a book about it. And I was like, yeah, definitely. Because it's like, okay, I'm out of college for a few years. I thought that I was going to be um, further along in my career. <laughs> what a joke. And I just thought, well, I did everything like I was supposed to, like people tell you to do, like they encourage you to do, and it just wasn't working out. And so, I don't know. I think now I still have goals, and sometimes I'll say, well, I want to accomplish this within this time frame, but I've gotten away from that. I need to do this by this age because mm -hmm. that will stress me the hell out. Yeah. Yeah. I, and even I when can't. you say like for people to have it figured out, even when you think you have it figured out, it's I don't really think you ever have anything figured out. Okay, you're like, I want the job. You get the job. Now you want something else. You want to make a certain money. You make the money. Now you want something else. You want the kids. You got the kids. Now you want to be free. You got freedom. Now you want some organization. You got organization. And it's like, you're never going to have it figured out. Like, you're never going to just be like, and I'm in my life and, I, and everything is, that's just not how life works. I think I look at the beauty of, everything that comes with it. And of course I've had like those moments of like, dang, I didn't get this or I didn't meet this. I didn't meet this marker. I wanted this to happen and it didn't happen. But I mm -hmm. think don't get so down on yourself. Make sure that you are paying attention to the way that things make you feel. If, if goals don't make you feel good, call it something else or, or make it about something else. Everybody. Um, what do you mean? If there's something you want to accomplish in life, Calm down. I'm really big on like, bro, relax. I, I one thing I will say now is that I don't live a stress life, a stressful life. I if things are making me stressed out, that you will see. A, I think we've seen each other both stressed. Like you'll just, it's not a. It doesn't bring. It makes me feel like I like I can't do anything. And so I've really been working on like I can't let things stress me out. So. If there's something that I want to accomplish it, I, that I'm trying to accomplish, I know that I'm going to accomplish it. A lot of things now, where I'm at now, and I look back at my life and everything I wanted to do, it's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's like in the moments, you're like, I, and this has to, and this has to be, when I finished, when I dropped out of school, I was like, finished school. Mm -hmm. I was like, nothing, I'm not going to, I don't deserve anything. I'm not going to, nothing that I ever wanted to really? get. I'm never going to get. Yeah, you're you you talk you talk worse to yourself than you would talk to well, I definitely anybody understand else. That, but I didn't know that you felt like that. Yeah, girl, I was like, I just felt so bad, and it was like I never want to feel like that again. So if it's something that I want to accomplish, I know I'm going to accomplish it mm -hmm. with or without a goal or a plan. And so it's like I want to be happy. I want to be free. And I have made that life for myself. Mm -hmm. And that, that feels good. And it's not really like it was planned out necessarily. It was just kind of like, okay, this happened. Let me just figure out the next steps to make the next big thing happen. But that's planning it out. Well, I don't actually do like a... I think for me, it's just like, I know in my mind what I want to do. I don't uh -huh. have like... And you know how some people, when you have your goals, you're like, I'm going to get the... I've tried the monthly journal books that help you plan stuff out every fucking year that shit stresses me even more out i'm like <laughs> i like throw to the fucking do this journal for away. the day <laughs> so that i can keep track of things and it's like it's not enough room for a whole bunch of stuff so i can't overload myself mm -hmm. and it's just like what are the three main things that you want to do today like maybe mm -hmm. you actually have a, an appointment that you have to make mm -hmm. you gotta show up to the studio and what are you gonna do for yourself today mm -hmm. remember to take i've been trying to find stuff that has the little reminders to do things for yourself so calm down and Calm the fuck down. I can't live life not calmed down. Like when I say calm down, I know I'm like kind of hyper and stuff, but I mean like just I'm not stressing. about to be stressing over stuff. I'm not gonna be stressing over not having a man. And I've done this. This is not to say that we haven't been there before. I've been there before. I don't like how it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not gonna stress about the the marriage thing. I know I talk about it. I love my man, and I do think he's gonna be my husband. But I'm not gonna like rush that because mm -hmm. I'm 35 and my eggs are almost gone. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna rush that. I don't know if yeah. I told you this before, but like the plan that I want for my wedding ring, that is something I got to plan for. <laughs> That's only because 
I need to make sure I have a healthy man to do this. So it's like, uh -huh. I don't want like an actual ring. I think I've said this before. Have what I told you, you what I want? I feel like you have, but tell me, because a lot of people I know are saying that they don't want an actual ring I or want, they want some other kind of something. I want him to take, go get surgery and have a rib taken out. And we make both you of- You did not tell me this. I haven't told you that. No. Okay. I want the to find get a doctor a that will take one of his out. ribs out. You don't need all of them. And um, take one of the ribs out. And that's what our rings are made from. My ring and his ring and so you can't just go under surgery for any old body we got to make sure we really got some things you know how did you find place. this <laughs> i didn't find it i just thought about it i was i thought about this i think maybe three years ago i was like you know what oh, so I, you just came up with this in your head yeah oh, i don't wow. like jewelry i really don't like jewelry uh -huh. so it's like it's a whole lot of money spent on stuff like for no fucking reason now if he doesn't if he decides he doesn't want to undergo surgery uh -huh. then i get it like well, I'll just have to he do a might rant. Keep his he might want to keep his he, but he said he would do it. I talked to him about it, uh -huh. and he was like, "If it's like safe and I'm healthy and like it's no there, we can do this. I would, I would definitely do it. I think that's really dope. And doing something like that with somebody, you can't just be like, "I'm ready to get married. I'm 35. You really gotta <laughs> take your time and make sure you know each other because ain't no coming back, baby. I got your rib. <laughs> I got your rib, and uh, that's oh. that is." Thinking of that makes that me feel is so interesting. Happy. It's, it is. <laughs> huh. It's like it reminds me of like Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob Thornton when they had the blood in there. Yes, in a little the vials. Little, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like uh, Megan Fox and I don't know if it was Machine Gun Kelly or the dude she was with before. They did something uh, different and very interesting. And I'm like, huh? People are really creative. People are really creative. I I admire people that live free lifestyles, and I'm not saying mm -hmm. that I will do all the free things, but I do admire, I admire people that like quit their jobs and they're just like, they're not stressed about it. Everybody mm -hmm. else is like, what are you going to do? And they're like, I'll figure it out. Shut mm -hmm. the fuck up. <laughs> I remember when I got, when I got laid off from my flight attendant job mm -hmm. and I, you know, there was a moment where I was like, dang, like I was really enjoying seeing the world, but I also kind of didn't like it. And I mm -hmm. didn't, I had been saying like, it's like a I little didn't want to do huh? it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I got laid off the way that I got laid off. It was just so ideal. I got laid off. I still got paid for an entire year. And it was really, it was a nice little check. I got my bunions removed. I just got everything that I could out of the job. Yeah. Didn't have to really That's do it. you should do it. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have to do any hard work for a year. And then it's crazy because I look at my life now. Like I said, I love traveling. I still have managed to manifest a job where I travel and see more of the world than I would see if I was a flight, better mm -hmm. parts of the world than I did when I was a flight and attendant. And you actually have time to experience and it. And I actually have time to experience it. And it, I, I forget that it's a, a form of income for me because uh -huh. it's fun. It's like sometimes for me, the goal planning, the, the goal setting with certain things, it's always started to confuse my mind. It's like, here's the word goal. And it's like, go get a job, go get a nine to five. You have to do like, and it's like, oh no, 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 no. Be yeah. Cause free, even when girl. you were saying, I could tell, cause even when you're saying something about, yeah, even if you don't have goals and it, you have things you want to do. And I'm like, things you want to do are goals, but the word, I get it. It's the it's word like, it's, goal. It's mm -hmm. the word hard work. I just don't like words like that. It's like, <laughs> no, nah, yeah, I got to flow and be free. That's the Libra in me. Mm. But what what about your timelines with uh, marriage or kids? Well, kids have not really been a big factor. And I think that that is some, that's a reason why I guess in my 25 years old plus point of life, that dog is angry. Uh, <laughs> it's not like shy. <laughs> After 25, it's like, I didn't feel the pressure to get married soon because I was rushing to have kids. And I found that a lot of my girlfriends who were, it was because they were worried that they wouldn't have children. And so I'm like, well, I could catch somebody on the second wave, maybe um, in my 40s. I don't know. And it's like love and marriage still seems beautiful. And maybe I'll have it one day. Maybe I won't. But that wasn't the biggest thing. Now, when I was younger, like maybe high school and early college, I was still thinking of life very unrealistically. I'm watching too much TV, reading mm -hmm. too many books that are just fucking fantasies where it's like you meet your husband in college, you get married a couple years later, you buy a house, you're in your careers, you're living this lavish life all before 30. Like, girl, please, because that obviously is not my life at all. So um, now... Like I said earlier, it's really just about me thinking about the things that I want and breaking down what it is that I want and how I'm going to get there. And then if I realize anywhere along the way that I don't want to do it anymore, that I've changed my mind, um, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And 
blocking out the outside noise from other people who may be naysayers or who put doubt in me about whatever decisions that I'm making or the path that I'm going on. Um, I know, I remember I had a whole falling out with somebody, um, a friend, and I remember she was asking me about the things that we talk about on this show. And oh, um, she was saying like, but what about like, your career. And I was like, what do you mean? What about my career? This is what I've been wanting to do. I don't want to be stuck doing something that I'm miserable at mm -hmm. because people think that's what you have to do. There's different ways to make money. There's different types of careers. I didn't even go to school to do something where I would be having more of a stuffy job. I'm like, those are the pressures that you're putting on yourself. I don't need you to put that on me. I'm proud of the stuff that we do. I'm proud of the content that we create. And I think it's going to go somewhere. And this is like way in the beginning when, when nobody even listened to this yet. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, wow, you're really trying to discourage me from doing something that I'm following a dream on and I'm trying to build something that I'm proud of. And you telling me that this isn't a good idea because basically I need to be thinking about my plan B, C, and D. And when people do that, it it's frustrating. Um, and I think that she probably meant well, but I just know I have to tune that out because I don't want to have too many negative thoughts because I already can be like, talk to myself rough mm -hmm. or have a lot of doubt. My anxiety is bad. Lately has been bad. And I just don't need that outside noise. So doing a better job of tuning that out and keeping more things to myself um, that I am more sensitive about, just being more self-aware in that regard so mm -hmm. that I don't even have to get upset about it. Don't, it's a non -issue. It's almost like you don't even hear it. You're like, hmm. Yeah. Or you have like a, a, a little comeback where it's like, I look at what this show has done for both of us all because of an idea you had. Mm -hmm. And it went through so many different transformations that it needed to go through. I'm sure you learned a lot before I got here and you learned a lot with me. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot about podcasting, doing this show, but to see like, I, I don't think y'all really understand like the amount of work that Kiki has put into cocktails that I have put into cocktails. And if you don't think it's a big show or if you do think it's a big show, thank you so much. This has, is a lot of work. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of money. Kiera and I used to, before we were had any type of sponsorships or these ads that you hear or these beautiful cameras and a team of just a piece of a team that helps us because we still do a lot of stuff on our own. That takes a lot of dedication and commitment. There would be times when we really couldn't even afford the studio time. And we would we would make sure we did it. Kiki would be like, this is the plan. You Because when I say I don't like plans and like, the goal, that's me. I still appreciate people that are like that. It's like, wow, you do still need somebody around this doing some, <laughs> and it's like the stuff the time when we weren't seeing eye to eye we still was like we got this is like a dream come true and to be able to create your own dream and make it come true I don't care what scale it is that is beautiful and that is better than going to a job that you hate and it's causing you stress causes cancer that's it does and wrinkles and wrinkles and attitudes and hard bellies and yeah. it's like I don't I don't want that I want to stress live causes up. cortisol y'all seen them commercials maybe having all kind of mm -hmm. medicines you need for that belly fat it causes it, it causes a lot and it's like I it, the people that be like well what you gonna do what do you mean what I'm gonna do I'm doing what I'm gonna do what and you then doing also it's like okay so many changes have been made things didn't work out things didn't go how we hoped that they would. Some things went better than we thought that they would, but if if you can't pivot from what your original idea was or the original thing was to make it into something else, you might get stuck with a very unhappy life mm -hmm. because had the first hiccup stopped me, we wouldn't be here, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, the point is, I think that the more I hear people stressing about not reaching stuff by a certain time. It's like, it's not over till it's over. Right. You're still here, you still have time. And I just wanna encourage people not to stress about that. Now, there are some things that you do have to do by a certain time. You gotta pay but, your bills. Yeah, and, and if you do want children, I mean, you don't have forever, right? But there are different things that you can do. So instead of stressing and just feeling like you have to latch on to somebody or instead of just doing things because you feel like your parents got it all figured out, they have a good life and you're just going to trust them and just do what they say, even though you're a little bit unhappy inside because you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. 
don't do all of that. You need to just relax mm -hmm. and just figure out a different way to do things and try. And if it doesn't work, pivot. There's nothing wrong with pivoting. There is nothing wrong with pivoting. Changing yeah. your mind, all that shit. Mm -hmm. Like that's part of growth and you learn more, you do more, you experience more. And when you try the things that you think you want and you realize you don't want it no more, now you know for sure. And you didn't have to wait for somebody to tell you or you didn't, you'll never have that. Well, I wonder what if. You know what if because you tried it for yourself. I never wanted to be that person that is trapped in a marriage or has kids or you you like wake up in your house with your family and you hate everybody. <laughs> You're just like, what? I that did sounds it. like a movie too. And that I know or an people, episode of Snapped. And sometimes people go out bad about that. But yeah. yeah, and I really look at life now. And I'm I'm so not to not to if you are you got married young and it's working out for you and you're happy. Kudos to you. That's a beautiful story. But there's a lot of people that got married young and they're like. I want to just live my life. I didn't I'm not wanna... who I was at 20. I don't know. I would have been a horrible wife if I got married when I thought I was supposed to be married, which was like, what, 25? I would have been a horrible wife and a horrible mother. Maybe I, I'm sure I would have figured it out, but I, mentally I just probably would have... I wouldn't have been Medina. <laughs> like, I, wouldn't, I want my kids to, like, experience, like, the real... Medina. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I needed to grow up a lot. And mm -hmm. so it's like, I, I feel so bad for people that I know that are really, you're not trapped in it. You can leave it, but they feel like they can leave it. And you're, you're, you're just in something and you're so unhappy and you think Going you can't. Going through the motion. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to feel that. I want to love the fuck out of who I'm with. I'm mm -hmm. not saying you don't have downs. I'm not saying that y'all, but I'm saying I want to genuinely love and appreciate the, and like the person that I decide to spend my life with mm -hmm. and make a father. That's important, bro. You can't rush that. You really can't. You really can't. I hope y'all stop doing that. Anyway, Please. to anybody out there worried about stuff, just relax. It's coming. Do a it's little coming. stretch. And yeah, just stay focused on the things that you want and don't worry so much about if you're going to get it by your 30th birthday. Because you're probably not. Because you're probably not. So <laughs> just be happy. And it's not so bad. I was definitely scared of like this age, but it's, it's kind of fun. I like it. I like it too. We mm -hmm. still look cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I feel a little bit more grown than I did in my 20s. I definitely felt like big teenager for most of my 20s. Yeah. Yeah. I feel grown. All right, y'all. Um, we are going to move on to Indecisive Diane. And when we come back, we have some advice letters to read. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Hey ladies, it's me, Diane, and this week I want you to try another class. Have you heard of Cake and Sip Atlanta? <laughs> well, head on over to CakeAndSipAtlanta.com and book your spot now. You get to drink a little alcohol and make a cake. Learn how to do what the people do that know how to do all those fancy things with cakes. Now this could be a, a, a date or just get your girls together and do something new. Bye. you guys so we are back from indecisive diane and it is time for the advice if you have a question that you'd like to ask us on the show please email us at vice at cocktailspod.com this is such this is perfect for the theme of the show she titled this is it me should i give up no sis we ain't even ready yet but you shouldn't give up no. hey ladies i hope y'all can help me before i lose my mind Growing up, I was very overweight, so no boys ever looked at me, wanted to date me, or even expressed interest in me. I had never kissed, went on a date, or had a boyfriend, so I was a very late bloomer and had extremely low self-esteem. When I graduated college, I lost a lot of weight and started finally going on dates via dating apps and getting approached in person. I was pressed to catch up to everyone else and had a hoe phase where I thought I was built for casual sex. Mm, spoiler, spoiler alert, I wasn't. Fast forward to today, I'm 27, still haven't been in a relationship. In fact, I've never been even close. Um, 
I've been on what feels like a hundred first dates and added several bodies. My last interaction basically sums up what happens to me all of the time. The guy approached me, love bombed me, speaking on the future, assured me we were on the same page on looking for a serious relationship, pressured me to sleep with him. Then his text started getting slower and eventually stopped. What is wrong with me? Why does no one want to commit to me? Should I just take a year off and stop dating? I have a great career, great friends, and travel a lot, but I'm just so lonely. I've been to therapy and she keeps telling me to not give up and put myself out there. But this is starting to make me feel very depressed and hopeless. Thanks, guys. So I don't want you to give up on yourself. Um, but I do wonder if you have a great career, great life, great family, great friends, why do you feel so lonely? Do you really have those things or does it just look like it? Like, mm -hmm. do you f actually feel fulfilled in those relationships or do you just have people you hang out with and can call for like little stuff? But do you, can you lean on your friends? Can you really talk to them? Can you be open with them? Maybe some of these relationships, maybe your job, it might be good. Like the benefits are good. Um, it's a cute title. Like people are like, oh, you work there, you know, whatever. But do you feel fulfilled? Because maybe that's, Aside from not having the romantic relationship, that could attribute to the loneliness too. And I think that you should ask yourself about that. And then as far as the men, um, I don't know. I think that you need to ask yourself, what's happening when you go on these dates? Okay, so they're love bombing you, <clears throat> but if they keep love bombing you, what's stopping you from recognizing it when it happens? Do you Are you falling for a fairy tale? Like, do you want a fairy tale? Are you stuck on this idea of a fairy tale? Mm -hmm. And so then it's like, oh, well, yeah, we're on the same page. But uh, that happens. Like, men will tell you the things that you want to hear for whatever reason, you know? And sometimes they do it for a long time. Sometimes it's for a short period of time. But you should ask yourself, what's happening? What actually happened with the last guy? What were those dates like? What were the conversations about? You said that they're pressuring you into sex. Why do you keep giving in? I what's was just about to that? point that part. When you say like he was on, we were on the same page and, you know, we were talking about if, you, if somebody, if you feel pressured to do anything, you already not on the same page. Sis. You're not. It's, you just not. It's, it's like you feel uncomfortable. So you ask him a question so that he can reassure you that you're wrong about your feelings feelings but your gut wasn't lying to you mm -hmm. and to come back later and say he love bombed you or they love bombed you they pressured you for sex and then it slowly tapers off I don't want to say anything is wrong with you I just think that you need to pay more attention mm -hmm. to what you're doing and what's happening around you right you said why what's wrong with me why doesn't anyone want to commit to me you won't commit to you and so mm -hmm. that's what you're attracting to you and if Y'all, when I tell y'all it really does work, if you pay more attention to how you treat yourself and how you're talking to yourself and how you feel about everything that you're doing in your life, everything from the job, like Kiki said, the people you're around, are you really happy in what is going on? Because if you're not and you're out here living a lie or walking in depression or walking in sadness, that's all you're attracting. You got it. You have to do some of the work and then the rest can flow to you, but you're not doing it. And I hope that doesn't sound harsh. I know the last girl was like, y'all being mean. We're not being mean. I really want to see a change in this. I want women to stop being like, he love on me. And no, I don't deserve love. That's not true. And in the game of love and dating, it's gonna, you're going to take some L's. It's how you deal with those L's. Are we learning the lessons? And it seems like you're not. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But you need to start even in the slightest ways like make some adjustments yeah I think you really got to pay attention to your life your therapist told you to just go back out there but if you don't trust yourself enough to pay attention then yeah you do need to take a little break and you don't have to put a time on your break mm -hmm. you need to do some some self-reflection look at those relationships look at how you're talking to yourself like mm -hmm. you say and how you feel about everything going on in your life and spend some time with you Maybe you don't ever spend time with just you and you're constantly with your friends, with your family or going out on dates, looking for men, doing all this stuff. And it's like you never really have a moment to yourself. What is it that you really want in your whole life? Not just your love life, not just your career. What do you want out of life? What makes you happy? You've got to figure out those things. You really do. And mm -hmm. if it, you might also need to get off Instagram, turn off the app sometimes. because if not, mm -hmm. Touch some grass, go into real life. Put your feet in Go some grass for real. It's called Sit grounding. It can mm. fix a lot. Um, but also, I was going to say, for Valentine's Day, one of the things that my boyfriend had got me was, uh, he got me three books. One of them, we almost got in a whole argument about it, but oh, it gosh. was, um, <laughs> one of them is called Attached. 
One is called Why You Not Married Yet. I almost bust him upside the head with the book, but I'm still gonna read it. And then the other one is called A Return to Love. I started reading A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson, and mm -hmm. it gives you this whole different perspective on love, dating, and just relationships in general, how mm -hmm. you're attracting things to yourself. I hope that you will go to Barnes and Noble or order it on Amazon. This is not an ad. It is just a very powerful book about everything love, not just love from men mm -hmm. or women, whatever, however, it, whatever is your preference. Love from from you and how that can help you grow in life. So I suggest you read this. It's called A Return to Love. You need to be returned to love. Yes. Sis. Good luck. And I hope things look up for you. All right. Next one. This says, hey, y'all. Love you guys. Quick questions. I've been messing with this dude for about three years now. And this is our first time spending Valentine's Day together. I got I gotten him something for Christmas, but he didn't get me anything. Okay. He knows <laughs> Valentine's I, Day don't fuck some shit up. Valentine's Day had the <laughs> listeners fucked up. The amount of emails, DMs, Twitter messages that people have sent about this day. Whew, this is gonna be a long spring getting through these. All right. Um Anyway, so she got him something for Christmas, but he didn't get her anything. He knows I'm an expensive and appreciative girly. But I don't think he knows what I like. If he gives me something I don't like and the money doesn't add up to what I gave him, how should I react? I'm going to be honest uh, for sure, but I want to think about his feelings too. This was... Um, this is interesting because... Okay. Again, I think that it's okay. Okay. First of all, Valentine's Day. I always looked at Valentine's Day like it's just like the thought that counts. Like I never have looked at... Any gift, first of all, unless it's like you, Valentine's Day is the thought that counts. It's like, you you know, my boyfriend got me three books. Mm -hmm. He did send me flowers and a bottle of champagne to my Brazil hotel. And that was mm -hmm. very sweet, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't like I was like, how much did you spend on this? But I kind of did. So I, <laughs> I understand what she's saying. But, but I asked him that because when she says like, he doesn't know what she wants, I think that's an okay conversation to have with somebody. And some people might look at it like it's ungrateful. But I, I think that it's okay to like tell somebody the types of gifts that you want, but there's a certain way that you have to bring it up and you need to be appreciative and, and thankful that they even thought about you. I had a conversation with my boyfriend when he sent the stuff to Brazil because it was very expensive and I don't like to waste money. I think I had kind of told her that I watched that movie and um, the movie on the plane, it was like, you really, you hurt my feelings. It was about people being honest, like honest to the core in a relationship, but respectfully. And so we had this conversation about like, what type of gifts do you like? And let me tell you what type of gifts I like from a small scale to an expensive scale, just so you kind of know we're not wasting money. Yeah. But if you're just looking at it like you just wanted something more because you spent a lot of money on him, I don't agree with that. I don't move like that. If I get my boyfriend some Valentino sneakers and he gets me, I don't know, like a something that doesn't equal Valentino sneakers... <laughs> The, the way that we love each other, we're not measuring it like that because there's been times when it's flipped. He gives me something really expensive and I got him a hoodie from Instagram. <laughs> like, and it's just cute because you could put a picture on it. And it's uh -huh. like, I think it's like, what is the thought and the feeling behind it? Like, if it's a competition, this might not really be it. You maybe need to go get a man that wants to compete in gifts. I don't, com I'm not a gift competitor. Does he even like giving gifts? <laughs> is he good at giving gifts? I'm just, um, I don't think you should have a big reaction because, again, I want you guys to open your eyes. He didn't get you shit for Christmas. Right. Oh, I forgot about that part. And it's Valentine's Day and he didn't get you anything expensive, but you're saying he knows that you're an expensive and appreciative girly. What does that actually mean to you? Because you're saying appreciative, but you're writing us because you don't really appreciate whatever it was what that did he, he did get you? and it's curious. not adding up I mean if that bothers you you definitely have to have a conversation because maybe he didn't think that it did yeah maybe he doesn't know what you like maybe you think you're giving off that you're this expensive person but maybe you you show him how appreciative you are for nothing or little things. Mm -hmm. So he's not thinking that. I think you just have to open your mouth. This isn't something where you can drop hints. It's not, you got, you got to have conversations, bro. Like, and mm -hmm. again, respectfully. And then also, you, this has been going on for three years. If you just want somebody else that's going to gift better, then get out of the relationship, I yeah. guess. You could also, um, a little easy thing you could do is just make like a little wish list yeah, and share, share it. it. You could even say, um, tell him to start it. 
so that he can put things that he wants and then you send him yours. And then both of you guys know because maybe you spending money on him and he doesn't want any of that. He wants a he, book. Yeah. You, some socks, I think that's something smart. practical. So nobody feels like they're wasting money. And you clearly and you feel like thousands it. of dollars and he just wanted a new set of kitchen utensils, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah. the way the gift is, I am, because even with friends, sometimes if you give a gift and it's a better gift, I would never be like, bitch, I'm always getting you. I'm either going to just stop getting you gifts yeah. or I'm, I like how it feels to do that. I'm mm -hmm. not doing it. To be like, nah, hold on, now you want to get something. Because yeah. maybe you should just buy yourself the shit that you want. <laughs> right. Like, Because he might not be a gift giver, right? And that's just, that's who you with. So figure out, does that really bother you that much? See how it goes after you have the conversation with him and what his response to it is. Um, so that hopefully y'all can get on the same page or reach a level of understanding and then go from there. Good I luck, so. girl. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, now it is time for us to move on to the cocktails. So if you have a cocktail that you would like to share, please email it to us. Cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Okay. Oh, you wait. Want to read it? That I put three advice because I oh. didn't know how long we were gonna Okay. So you can read my cocktail, it's short. Um I finally did it. Okay. Um, hey, Kiki and Medina, I've been a faithful listener and watcher of the podcast for three years now. Hearing y'all talk about licking booty hole has me very curious to try it out, and I finally had the opportunity. Mm. Uh, prior to the amazing ass euphoric experience, I had asked my man, would he be okay with me eating his ass? Mm. He just laughed it off, essentially. And to be honest, his response didn't surprise me because I joke around with him and say a lot of wild ass shit. So this week, my cycle started and he came over on a heavy flow day. I knew I really didn't want him to run the red light. To me, it just doesn't feel the same. So I can wait for penetration. But I was like, I'm just going to give him some real sloppy head and juggle his balls in my mouth. <laughs> Ladies, I don't know if it was the drink in me, but once I got to those balls, I didn't stop going lower and went to the booty hole. The way he moaned turned me on. It got to a point where he was covering his mouth. I love giving him that pleasure. This was my first time ever doing this and I'm 28. I always said I wouldn't lick a booty hole unless it was my husband. Hopefully my ring comes soon. <laughs> I just had to let y'all know if it wasn't for me being an avid listener of this podcast, I probably would never have tried it. Thank you for being the sexually liberated women you are and pouring that into listeners like me. Love y'all. XOXOXO, the newest booty hole tongue warrior. <laughs> I'm glad I you enjoyed yourself, and he did too. You're welcome. We out here doing work, good work. Mm -hmm. And the, to the lady that sent the advice letter, maybe you need to eat his booty hole. Maybe <laughs> then he'll start acting right. Okay, he's gonna be buying you all kind of presents. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you gonna read the other one? Oh, do we have time? Yeah, we can. Okay. So this one is titled, Me and Bay Went to Hedonism. Oh, so did me and Kiki. She said, hey, girls. I've been listening to the show since 2018. It, oh, she a long time listener. Mm -hmm. It was a good distraction from the situation I was going through at the time. I married my college sweetheart in 2016, found out he was cheating in 2018, divorced him, and never looked back. Come on. I was nervous about getting back into the dating world after being with someone for 10 years, but the podcast really helped me to relearn myself and liberate me sexually. I love hearing that type of feedback. Mm -hmm. That is really what matters. Like, we're glad y'all are eating booty holes and leaving niggas that don't deserve you. Right. I met my now boyfriend in 2019. He's 13 years older than me. I'm 35. I've always been attracted to older men, but never dealt with anyone on a serious and committed level before now. Anyway, life has been great, and we both really enjoy traveling together. We went to Negril for his birthday this year in February. We talked about possibly exploring hedonism and also discussed what our boundaries would be if we did decide to go prior to the trip. Smart. That's mm -hmm. how you do it. We agreed that no oral action would take place if we chose to swap, and that if either was uncomfortable, we would communicate in the moment, not participate and or leave. Well, after finishing dinner with the fam, we decided to walk over from, from our resort next door. For the day pass, you have to be in by 10 p.m., but it was almost 10.30, so they said we were too late. Mm -hmm. However, I convinced them to let us in since it was Bay's birthday. We go in and immediately see someone being whipped. 
Apparently, it was fetish night. We began Ooh. to walk around and explore the resort. We get some drinks and stumbled upon the beach. There was a couple fucking on one of the beach chairs. We walked down to, we walked down to watch, and before I knew it, I was riding my man's dick while the waves was crashing up on the shore. I was, it was definitely a fantasy I never knew existed, and I knew that I wanted more. When uh, we then found the nude pool and immediately, I'm seeing all of this in my head since mm -hmm. we've been, we then found the nude pool and immediately got undressed and into the water. I bet you did. <laughs> we fooled around at the pool, but decided to try the happening, the happening hut. That little hut that was, um, I thought it the was playroom? where chlorine tanks were. Not the playroom, oh, but that little room. by the towels. Mm -hmm. Okay, the happening hut. Since the, day, uh, since the day pass doesn't cover the playroom. Baby, I released all my inhibitions. I didn't care who saw, who watched, who commented, nothing. The feeling of being watched and watching others had me so fucking wet. I think Bay was a little hesitant, so I just reminded him that it was just me and him. The sex was amazing and so exhilarating. There weren't any other couples or men or women we were attracted to so we only engaged with each other but it was still an interesting and fun experience I definitely think I was more into it than he was because mm -hmm. I didn't even want to leave it too when the pass <laughs> expired he was wide awake <laughs> but overall we both enjoyed the experience I absolutely would go again make sure you check out worst behavior tour and try to go with them I'm not sure how the how it was when you were there but it's a black group that travels to hedonism I think a few times a year yeah I think they go three times a year we went to the December trip it was a nice size group it was yeah. lots of lots of people i'm glad you had a good time girl Me too. all right you guys well that's it for this week make sure you sign up for patreon patreon.com slash cocktails check the description box for links to everything we have going on and make sure you're following us on instagram i'm at kiki said so i'm at coffee bean d and until next week you guys goodbye goodbye bye Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.